This review is brought to you by Node Gamers, the content creator run site bringing you trophy and achievement guides as well as gaming reviews. Your friends become your enemies and your enemies become your friends. It'll be up to you to deceive the humans or find the robots. First class trouble, test your perception, awareness, and trust. One bottle of champagne at a time. My name is V and here's my review for first class trouble. First Class Trouble is the newest game in the whodunit genre and will take you into the world of mystery and deception, all while donning some classic 50s outerwear. You'll be put into a group with five other players in each match. Four of you will be residents, or human players, and two of you will be personoids, or robots. The residents will need to complete each level's designated task, whether it be collecting keycards or repairing electronic devices, all while keeping an eye out for those pesky personoids. The personoids can help with the task if they want, but they can also be the devious machines they were created to be and sabotage everything. If the residents make it to the end with no personoids alive, they win. If the personoids get rid of all the residents before the end, or if at least one is still alive during the final task, they'll win. Throughout the game, the residents will also need to keep the ship's oxygen levels full while working on their task. If the oxygen runs out, the residents will suffocate and the personoids will win. While this all probably sounds awfully familiar and similar to another classically deceptive game, it does have its own spin that can make you love or hate it depending of course on what side you're playing on. One of the main features that I personally enjoyed was that any player can deal a killing blow. It's not just the personoids that you need to look out for. If another player finds you to be on the suspicious side, they and another player can actually kill you with a good old fashioned chokehold. Because of this, you really need to make sure you're watching as many players as you can to ensure they're completing the task and not trying to deceive you. Personoids, of course, will have many more tools at their disposal, most notably a syringe shot that will kill any player, including the other personoid. On top of being able to sabotage everything, personoids are also equipped with a scanner that will give them the location of all weapons, oxygen vents, and players in the current level. This is very beneficial to the personoid who would rather sneak around and hide in the shadows instead of actively helping the residents survive. Outside of the main objectives, there are also a variety of items that you can pick up and throw at other players, which doesn't really serve too much of a purpose, but it is quite fun to chuck a bottle of champagne at someone's face and see them take a tumble because of it. If you're feeling extra cruel, you can even push other players into pools, electrified hallways, and fire, which will of course kill them if they're not rescued in time. At the start of stages 2 and 3, the players will gather together for an emergency meeting where they will have the option to debate and potentially vote another player out. If the other players start to think you're a personoid, you'll need to convince them otherwise. If you don't, you run the risk of being shoved into the airlock and sent off into space. If no players stand out as being suspicious, all of the players can pass and continue with the game. If the residents feel they have removed all of the personoids, they can choose to end the game right then and there. But as always, be careful when making these decisions because it can easily cost your team the game should you be tricked by the sneakiest of personoids. First Class Trouble is a cross-platform multiplayer game which allows you to connect to far more people which ensures you'll always have a full group to play with if the servers allow you to connect that is. While at the time of writing this review, the servers have improved quite a bit since day one, but they still have their moments of temperamentality that can sometimes be a time consuming issue to fix. Being plagued with network errors in a game that is based solely online is not a fun problem to have, but it can usually be fixed by just restarting the game or waiting a few minutes before you try again. This isn't too bad if you're playing solo, but if you're playing with a group of friends, it runs the risk of putting a damper on an otherwise rather enjoyable multiplayer experience. Creating a party comes with its own issues since you have to invite players through the in-game friend system versus inviting them through your console. This isn't a new concept in games, but the problem comes when you've added each other and send invites, then nothing happens. With no other way to join each other or create a party, it doesn't take long for frustration to kick in when all you want to do is play the game. Out of all of the issues the game could possibly have, the servers being the worst one is less than favorable, but with each patch they release, you can see a clear difference in their functionality, so it's nice to see how aware the developers are of the issue and how quickly they are working to resolve it. You can probably expect these problems to be non-existent in the near future. In the land of trophies and achievements, you hunters will be up for quite a run. There are achievements in the game that will be near impossible to get solo, so if you're looking to get them all, you'll need to get a group together. 
On top of those, you will also be welcomed into the lair of the RNG god himself and find yourself crossing fingers, making deals, and begging for certain scenarios and levels to appear. There are achievements that you can only earn as a personoid and ones that you can only earn as a resident, which alone can take a few rounds to get the proper setup for, since the character assignments will always be random. The level-specific achievements will require a lot of patience, as it feels like the ones that have no achievement tied to them appear far more often than those that do. While you can technically get all of the achievements done in about 20 to 25 matches, you'll need to be incredibly lucky to do so, so you can expect to play far more purely because of how random the match generation is. While this is great for the game overall, from a trophy and achievement standpoint, it can get quite tedious. Overall, First Class Trouble gives you pretty much what you'd expect from it. You'll have a better time playing with familiar people versus complete strangers, but even with the latter, you can still expect to have your fair share of laughs here and there. While the server issues are a problem right now, 95% of the time you'll be able to play without any issues, so while they do need to be mentioned, it's not something that should deter you from checking out the game. At the time of writing this, the game is free on all platforms, so there's no reason you shouldn't at least give it a try. At the end of the day, I gave this game a 6 out of 10 star rating, the pros for the game being that it is great to play with friends, it's easy to learn and get the hang of, the matches are short, allowing you to get quite a few in within a small period of time, and the RNG of the game generation allows for a good variety of gameplay experiences for each player. The cons that I personally found in the game are that the servers are having quite the issues right now. Playing in a lobby full of strangers can often lead to a very quiet match which kind of goes against the main point of the game. The in-game friend list and invite system can take a bit to figure out and it doesn't always work properly. And when it doesn't, it makes it impossible to play with your friends since you can't create a party due to the server issues. And that'll just about wrap up my review for First Class Trouble. Again, my name is V and thank you all for watching and don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more indie gaming content.